For my new subscribers, body language is the whole body. When analyzing and coming to a conclusion, you should see multiple tells to verify your conclusion. I don't always point out every movement. It's just habit for me at this point. But I am making a conscious effort to point them out. The eyes don't always say deception. A visual thinker, an emotional thinker, and a memory-based thinker can look like a deceiver when compared to each other when they are not. The eyes are a good tool for seeing which area of the brain is being accessed. There is very good research on the brain for function and mapping. Understand by their own admittance, they are far from mapping or understanding the entire brain. Remember to check out Patreon. Survivors of ritual abuse, Sandy Hook, Lee Harvey Oswald, Amanda Knox, Ted Bundy, and more to come. Today we're looking at the farewell address of Obama's. First we're going to do Barack Obama, and then we're going to look at Michelle's farewell address. Let's get started. Deep breath. This is one of the parts I wanted to sh we were going to discuss. In 10 days, the world will witness a hallmark of our democracy. Now, watch that jawline. No, 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 no. The peaceful transfer of power. Now he's had to lean into the podium to give himself support on the line that he's about to give. From one freely elected president. And you see his jawline go down. To the next. I committed to President-elect Trump that my administration would ensure the smoothest possible transition. Now his jawline is up and his jawline went down just as President Bush. So he's owning, I'm going to do it just like President George Bush did for me. And you have to go back and I think, what did W do for Barack Obama? I don't know. There wasn't a whole lot of news back then in mainstream or alternative of the nitty gritties that were going on. Nor was it a very apparent of what was going on. Other than one thing, then that was the economic collapse. He's definitely an actor. Good God. Reading him is going through a minefield. To President-elect Trump, that my administration would ensure the smoothest possible transition. Just He's got that finger move. President-elect Trump, that my administration would ensure the smoothest possible. Right here. It gives an amount. When you see this. It was the very first video I did. It's an amount. And you see how generous his amount is. It's pretty generous. When you, and I say this because the tendons here in your finger, in a relaxed state, it's closed. So you have to open them. And there's a point in opening them that it becomes extremely restrictive as far as just opening your fingers. So he has got it actually open to the restricted part of where your tendons are straining to open with your other fingers closed. And for your own amusement, do that now. Open your fingers and find out where it's very relaxed to have them open and then you're straining to open them and then they're relaxed. And he's got them right at the point of any more and he would actually strain it to be open. Transition, just as President Bush for me. I don't know what happened with Bush other than the economic collapse. And yes, I'm calling it a collapse, but he's giving it what would say an average amount. And the good news is that today the economy is growing again. Wages, incomes, home values, and retirement accounts are all rising again. Poverty. See that jawline isn't as up as it was, and it's not like it's inches. It's just, it's minute. It is falling again. And that deep breath that went with it. <sighs> like I'm getting through this BS. At the slowest rate in 50 years. And he doesn't bring it up at all. And I've said, and I mean it, if anyone can put together. And his head goes up. He wants to own this. Together a plan that is demonstrably better. Then the improvements we've made to our healthcare system that covers as many people at less cost. I now you see, see this, we'll point this out. Anyone can put together. Watch his, I'm going to point with my finger. 
Watch his head and the difference it is when he's emphasizing a word when it goes down to emphasize compared to what it is when it's just down because he doesn't want to own it. Is there a plan that is demonstrably better See? than the improvements we've made to our health care system that covers as many people at less cost? I will publicly support it. And then it goes all the way down. He doesn't believe that one could be done that way. Does not believe that. Basically, I'm going to go back to that because I want to make sure that it's understood. Anyone can put together a plan that is demonstrably. If anyone, and he's got his setup, he's owning this statement right here. And then it breaks down. Better than the improvements we've made to our health care system that covers as many people at less cost. He's owning all of this. I will publicly support it. He doesn't own that. And it's not like he doesn't own it in the sense of he doesn't mean it. He just doesn't believe it would happen. I, that's the part I want to make sure is clear. And he may not own what he said here because in his mind, it never occurred to him that that was actually possible. It's like someone saying, well, I'll give you my left arm. If you can make teddy bears dance the jig, I would not give you my left arm if you made, even if I said that, made teddy bears dance the jig. It just wouldn't happen because I don't believe that you could. And it was something I just said out, out of my behind. The same thing I asked when you took a chance on me eight years ago. Take a chance on Donald Trump? Notice that his head is not held up here. I'm asking you to believe, not in my ability to bring about change, but in yours. I'm asking you to hold fast to that faith written into our founding documents. That idea whispered by slaves and abolitionists. That spirit sung by immigrants and homesteaders and those who march for justice. It's not holding up high. It's not completely down low. He's literally just reading the speech here. And that's what I found very interesting. As I've watched this spiel that he gave. A lot of it was just him reading a speech. No real emotion. That creed reaffirmed by those who planted flags from foreign battlefields to the surface of the moon. A creed at the core of every American whose story is not yet written. Yes, we can. He didn't own that. Did not own that. Finder. You made the White House a place that belongs to everybody. And a new generation sets its sights higher because it has you as a role model. So the daughter is crying. She's touched by her father's words. Let's go on to Michelle. This is Michelle Obama's final speech. And I just have to point this out. Listen and watch. Doesn't that remind you of a Hillary Clinton rally? We won't get in too much about what she's saying and how her body's reacting to it in this little farewell speech. We're really going to try and get into her mindset because I think that is extremely important because there is a real possibility that Michelle Obama will be running for president in 2020. I'm done for this country. Uh, I also want to acknowledge a, a, a few other special... See them hands rubbing together? The goodies. Yes, we have in the audience. We've got a pretty awesome crew. Lean back, head to the side. Cocky. <laughs> you know, as one of my staff said, you roll pretty deep. Arrogance. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, we have a few good friends. And pride. With us today, Ted Allen. La Brushing it off, just her rolling deep. Ala Anthony, Connie Britton, Andy Cohen. Yeah, Andy Cohen is here. 
and more pride. The nostalgia of her position has never worn off. Now you sit there and we do body language and we're going to go more on this. No, I won't. We're not going to go more on that. The Q&A is a Q&A, but I am going to make a video eventually on instructional. Another one. But that's the fact that I tell you there's lots and lots of tells for everything. The other part of that, reading body language is like a sentence. I think that's important for me to say at this point. I don't think I've ever said it before, but we're going to say it now. It's like a sentence. Every sentence has a subject, a predicate, and every once in a while they've got a direct object, a predicate, a predicate nominative, and a predicate, bleh, predicate adjective. Boy, I cannot speak. So when we watch this, we're putting together sentences and paragraphs when we watch people. I'm looking at the entire sentence. And this woman is extremely arrogant. This is a typical reaction after she makes a point that she gives. Administration, the largest investment in higher education since the GI Bill. Pride in herself, loves that attention from the crowd. And today, the enjoys that nostalgia. And this is typical of her mindset. Every time she gives a speech, she waits when she's like, she's made a point. She's got moments where she'll pause and she expects the applause and the cheering. Very excitable by that. I mean, it's good to sit there and be happy that people are happy with you or people are happy of the statement you made. But to literally wait and expect it for every one of your pauses, not a healthy mind. The high school graduation rate is at a record high and more young people than ever before are going to college. And, we and she waited. They didn't clap. Once you get into the mindset of a speech and you're very practiced at it, and she's had eight years of doing this, you know immediately if the applause is coming or not. And so she's come accustomed to knowing the signs of when the applause and cheers are coming. But she still waits. She closes that mouth, puts her face together. I'm going to wait. It's not coming. It's shoved off as a... I'm swallowing, I'm taking a breath, but I'm still waiting for that. We're going to watch a little bit of her impassioned speech. American values and to honor them in your daily lives. And that means getting the best education possible so you can think critically. She's about to put her whole body into this speech. So you can express yourself clearly so you can get a good job and support yourself and your family. So you can be a positive force in your communities. And when you encounter obstacles, because I guarantee you, you will, and many of you already have, when you are struggling and you start thinking about giving up, I want you to remember something that my husband and I have talked about since we first started this journey nearly a decade ago. Something that has carried us through every moment in this White House and every moment of our lives. I know I'm letting that run a little bit and you're listening to her, but I'm hoping you're paying attention to how she's putting her voice into it. She's shifted her weight on her feet and she's really getting into this speech. She's and in, not in a mental sense, but in a energy sense, in a, I'm telling you this great story. And that is the power of hope. The belief that something better is always possible if you're willing to work for it and fight for it. She's gotten into that speech. Now I've watched quite a few speeches in my day from college and doing this. And every time I see her do this, and I don't really mean to pick on her with this, but it's just something I've noticed. It reminds me of the older speech people. 
Mussolini would get into his speeches. Hitler would get into his speeches. I mean, really put 